Good morning from New York City. It's uh, pretty hot here at the moment, maybe 95 degrees. So uh, let's see. I was asked the following question. The universe is said to um, have an isotropic background black body radiation of temperature 3K. The question, what does radiation of 3K mean? Well, I'll give you an answer first in a sentence, all right? The sentence is, it's actually written on the board. It means that black body radiation corresponding to the 3K curve permeates the universe. Hence, its peak radiation, lambda zero, is given by 2.9 by 10 to the power of minus 3 um, meters Kelvin over 3K Kelvin, right? Which is about one millimeter. All right, so that's the radiation wavelength at its peak. So what does that mean? Well, it goes back to um, Edgar Allan Poe, right? Edgar Allan Poe, well, he's the same guy who wrote The Pit and the Pendulum, The Cask of Amontillado, Annabelle Lee, and so on and so forth. You say, what's that got to do with him? Well, he answered first what's called Olbers Paradox. Here's the general idea. Well, first of all, let's state the Olbers Paradox. Olbers Paradox asks the question, why is the night sky dark? And you say, well, gosh, only the stars out there, there's only a few. Not necessarily, this is the way it works. The night sky should be bright, full of stars. Because if there was an infinite number of them, and all the light has reached us since the beginning of the universe, or if there was a beginning, uh, it should be covering the night sky. It's like being in a forest. When you're in a forest, a deep forest, right, somewhere up in Canada, let's say, uh, and you're, let's say, 10 miles in, 10 miles off the road, what do you see when you look towards the road? You know where the road is, it's over there. You see a wall of trees. There is not a single space where you can't uh, catch a tree in, in your sight, right? So, you see a wall of trees until what happens? You start walking towards the road, right? As you get towards the road, gaps start appearing in the wall of trees. And eventually, you only see a couple of trees and you're on the edge of the forest. But deep in the forest, you get the wall of trees. Now, Olbers' paradox realizes that we are deep in the universe, and we should get a wall of stars. Well, we don't. Edgar Allan Poe says the reason for that is because there was a beginning. A beginning to what? A beginning to the universe. Now, what is that? In modern terms, people call it the Big Bang. I think it's a terrible piece of terminology. It's just an origin. It means that the universe began at some point and started to evolve, expanding. Now, as things expand, just like a, an ideal gas, the temperature is going to drop, right? One of the three gas laws. So, as the universe expands, the temperature, which was really hot at the Big Bang start, drops down to a uniform isotropic temperature of 3K. Now, that was discovered First of all, that was predicted, probably by, was it Bob Wilson? I can't remember. Penzias and Wilson got the Nobel Prize for it anyway. Arthur Penzias discovered the stuff predicted already. It's one of the most powerful uh, pieces of predictions and observations from the last century. That somebody could actually go down, figure out the temperature of what the radiation of the universe should be, come up at 3K, and then some other guy finds it. Actually, he was working down there in Bell Labs in New Jersey, and they thought first that uh, the radiation was due to pigeon droppings on the antenna dish. So they went up and cleaned it off. Didn't make any difference. They could never get rid of this. Pointed in a different direction in the universe, it's always there. It never is eradicated. It's permeating us from out there in the universe. Uh, all right, so that's the black body radiation. That was discovered actually 1965 and the Nobel Prize was awarded in 1978. It was a pretty good one. Okay, what next? So, that's the situation. What about this 3K radiation? Well, the general idea is this 3K radiation, well, it is really the 3K curve. What does that mean?
If we plot the energy density, the spectral energy density, that is, with the lambda dependence, or we could plot in a slightly different curve, <coughs> I lambda t and u lambda t are related. u lambda t is the energy density. Um, well, it's the spectral energy density, joules per cubic meter per hertz. So that we can say this. Well, we could check, we, should, we could plot frequency or we could plot wavelength. Let's plot wavelength for this one. So in terms of wavelength, black body radiation curves follow the Planck radiation law. Okay, the Planck radiation law generates curves for each temperature. So there's going to be a curve corresponding to the background black body radiation, this one. Okay? Now you take the derivative. Okay, let's put in some other curves. Let's say for higher temperatures, starts heading towards this direction at higher temperatures still. Okay, so that the curve peak obeys this equation, right? Lambda zero, that's the peak of each curve, is going to have this particular value. Now for the background black body radiation, the peak is at approximately one millimeter. So that's a very tiny little curve. That's the spread of radiation. It's the spectrum, and it's not discrete because it consists of all the possible wavelengths between here, here, and here with no gaps. It's a continuous spectrum. Now that's exactly what that, uh, the answer to that question. Um, what else can I say? That's about all I can do for this one. Is, uh, we'll do something else in a minute. I can give you the units of this I. It's going to be watts per square meter per hertz per solid angle per stair radian. Okay, here are the units of the I. Okay, that'll do us for this particular question.